welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today, we get to speak with Monica Allen. Monica is a dual licensed family nurse practitioner and also a mental health nurse practitioner who left the Veterans Administration kind of unexpectedly last year to start a company. Her company is called Allen Money Talks. And she's also about to publish a book, Girls Just Want to Have Funds. I love that pun. Girls Just Want to Have Funds. And she's doing motivational speaking on her own schedule. Her motivation to do all of this was fueled by an early start as a teenage mom. Her father died quite young. Uh, He was only 44 of a heart attack. And she was divorced by age 22. So she really has a lot of life experience. She gives hope to women who are on the front lines of their household finances with a four-step plan to change all of their family's legacies, which is so important. After COVID, this crazy pandemic, a lot of people have had to quit their jobs, uh, take care of school-aged children. There was inflation that hit us recently that's at an all-time high. We really do need someone like Monica to give everybody direction and hope. And that is what she is here to do. So Monica, welcome to the show. Flavia, thanks for having me. I think that we're going to have a great discussion today. We are because this, it's very, the timing is fortuitous, right? The things that inspire you, that you're passionate about really are hitting right now at a time when many people are feeling that finances are out of control because their grocery bill, their housing bill, everything just went through the roof. Crazy inflation, right? Uh, Costs going up 10, 15, 20% on some categories of things but their jobs didn't give them necessarily an equal raise. You know, their boss didn't show up and say, you get a 20% raise because groceries cost 20% more. It really hasn't worked out that way. So I think right now, a lot of people are feeling very lost about finances. And that is what you're here to do. You're here to help act as kind of a compass and, and give direction and hope and inspiration. So tell us a little bit about that journey. That journey has been unexpected, but such a blessing for me because I actually thought that I would be staying in the VA Medical Center until retirement. But a couple of things were going on for there for me. And I think I just graduated into that. So didn't even realize that my lifestyle, my lack of work-life balance, I had 600 hours of annual leave and no leave coverage. So there was no one there that could cover me for vacations. Really, it ended up in the last few years, I had no way to really spend or enjoy the money that I had earned and certainly no freedom. So when it came to a certain point, a lot of doors shut at the VA for me and it was a little disheartening, but I took a leap of faith and left there and it has been nothing but a blessing ever since. So healthcare and finance in some people's minds, like those are very different trainings, different worlds, different just areas of of life, right? So you were transitioning from healthcare to finance, but finance affects every single person. Like you could be a nurse practitioner and be running your personal finance like a pro or better than a pro. I mean, so it's not exclusive, mutually exclusive that if you're great with healthcare, you're not going to be an expert in finance and vice versa. So tell us a little bit about how that transition looked for you. Why did you go from the healthcare field uh, into something that is so different? That's a good question. And the reason stems back a long time ago, but I like to keep stories short if I can. So I always have had a fascination with numbers and statistics. And a long time ago, I was going to become a math teacher. And my math teacher brought me aside in high school and said, hey, you are great with numbers, but this is a side gig for me. And he knew that I had had a baby at age 16. He said, you need to do something different. So I opened my mind and thought I was going to become a CPA, but medicine took the reins of my life and I love it. But it wasn't really until I had started on my second marriage, which has been now over 30 years. And I realized, wow, we have college degrees and 
we should be doing great. We build a house. We have this and that. And I can't order a pizza on a Wednesday night. And then I remembered how much I loved numbers. So I started reading everything I could get on numbers and how to manage money. There were so many different programs out there and there's so many different steps. And I think the bottom line is for people to choose one and stick with it. But what I found over my years is that many of them, when they looked at the steps and they couldn't afford to buy a pizza that night, or they were what we call living paycheck to paycheck, they did not want to know about step eight, which might be fund my kid's 529 college plan because it was not realistic for them. So what I put together is just like a kitchen table talk, just like we're doing here, where we're sit down and there's four steps. And most people, no matter where you're at on the salary range, in medicine, a lot of people, we get paid really well for the most part. I don't think too many people are unhappy with their pay in medicine. But if you're, you can spend everything. There's six figure, seven figure people that spend everything that they bring in. So mine is a simple four step plan that can skyrocket your family and change your family tree and legacy if you'll let it happen. And there's many people at all different income levels that are not doing that. Why do you think, and I agree with you, there are so many people that have kind of a little bit of a head in the sand, put my hands over my eyes. I don't want to know how my budget's doing. I don't want to know what's in my bank account. I just hope when I write this check, it goes through. And living paycheck to paycheck. It's very, very common. And cycle, and you, you've been a mental health nurse practitioner. So you know that the brain is sometimes not working in our own best interest. And so why are people sabotaging their own family legacy and their finances? Why is it so common to live paycheck to paycheck and to be sort of in denial about financial health? Well, denial feels pretty good. And I always say this, that I think we're so overwhelmed with just going to work, raising kids, and all of the have-tos that we have on our plate. And it can be everything just from mom guilt about I'm not there for my kids. Sometimes I'm not there for work. I certainly am not there for my in-laws like I should be, on and on and on, this guilt. And so sometimes when we do have extra money, we're just like, we deserve this and we deserve that. And I always say this to people because you can outspend any income. If you want to spend $700 a month on eating out, that is great, but just list it, put it down on paper and see where it is that you're spending your money. And then when you look at every place that you're spending your money, if you see I'm spending $700 a month on some great meals and I really enjoy it, but I'm putting 200 a month in my retirement, mindset wise, we might change. And I think you don't do it until you put it down and see where, where the money's going. I think you've nailed it. There's a lot of, a lot of, it's not even, it goes beyond denial. It's, it's just kind of a blindness to where the money's actually going. And there's so many great apps out there that help you track your finances with bookkeeping, kind of consolidate some of your credit card statements or bank accounts into one screen that you can look at. There's a few out there. It's not just one or two. And so the tools are available, right? The tools are there to really monitor where is your money going every month? So you can strategize a little bit better. So when people come to you for coaching, what are some of just those first few wins that you can help people with? Because I'm sure there's a lot of things they can do. Obviously, some of it's going to take a little bit of time to implement, but you probably see a lot of people come through your coaching where there's a couple of kind of low hanging fruit type things that they can do right away that will really make a difference. There are big things that they can do right away. And the biggest of the four steps is to get out of debt to when you see everything and I like them to write it on paper, but I certainly don't care if they use an app. If they have a, a spouse or significant other, sometimes one of them is app savvy and the other hates anything to do with electronics. So putting it on paper at least gives us a snapshot of what's going on, even if you don't change it. But if you free up money by getting rid of some debts, then you can choose what that extra money goes to. And it should go, part of that should go to important areas like your retirement, because you are going, trust me, you don't know really for sure when your retirement's gonna come. And we, none of us want to lower our lifestyle in retirement. And the biggest thing about saving is because you may be in a job that's draining your health and 
taking everything. I work with physicians. They are just there to buy all these really nice things. And trust me, many of them are not enjoying any of the things that they're buying. They're just working, working, working to pay the payments and to get kids through college and that sort of stuff. And then they end up just dying of a heart attack because they've had this stress on, I call it this invisible noose around your neck. You know, you're making good money and it's coming in. And, but you also know that it goes out and it's, it's buying things, maybe things that you can't even enjoy. And stress really is a health emergency because I have seen like a friend of mine had to go through a divorce, which is super unfortunate and very stressful. And that stress from a divorce, which is really a legal proceeding and an emotional sort of event in your life led to some odd like back pain, stomach pain, weird sprains, weird uh, allergic reactions, you know, things like all these health effects that all seem to occur right around the time when life was very stressful. And then when the the divorce was sort of finalized and, and things were a little bit less in the front burner, all those health <laughs> problems just kind of magically melted away. It was like this very strange connection between stress and general health. Uh, again, I'm not a medical practitioner and any sense of the word. So take this with a grain of salt. It was just an anecdotal story of someone that is close to me, but it always made me think, you know, how much do we not know about the connection between mindset and your general health and well-being? And maybe even doctors don't quite know how all the the levers and cogs in that machine are connected and work. So, and yeah, finances equals stress for a lot of people, for sure. That's definite. And You hit it right on the nail on the head because I worked in cardiology for 10 years. 50% of the people that have a heart attack will die right away. A lot of times they'll say or assume it was 100% blockage of the widow maker, which is the LAD artery, which is beside the point. There's tons of people that have heart attacks without what we would consider enough blockage, but they have spasms. We hear about people that are out shoveling snow and they might be in their 30s. They're breathing in the cold air. They might have stress. They have spasms. Maybe they ate a big meal before they went out and did it. So the link can't be overlooked. And sometimes when you're under that stress, and you might not even know it, but you're under the stress and something happens to you physically, even when your stress goes away, that leaves a mark that you can't get rid of. And so we have to face the fact that working on your family's finances, your household's finance. It could just be you. You you don't have a family or you don't have a household. It's just you. But working on those finances could indirectly, and again, this is sort of a hypothesis, but could indirectly also affect your general health in many ways, which is just another area of life where you really want to have as much health as possible because without your health, it's harder to enjoy life. So that's why I love what you're doing because your mission, even though we, we talk about how healthcare and finance seem like kind of different fields, there could be a lot of connection there. Like with what you're doing by helping people learn how to manage their finances better, you might actually be keeping them healthier too. That's exactly right. And that's my hope because the stress, stress breaks up marriages. Stress does a lot of things and you don't even maybe realize what it's doing, but we have to take that into account and realize that there is a better life. And it might, we always say, how much money do I need to retire? So many people worry about that. But I, I tell you this, I've seen people that had 2 million in the bank and no health and they would gladly give the 2 million up because they don't have their health and they can't enjoy the 2 million. So your book, Girls Just Want to Have Funds, tell us about it. What was the catalyst and inspiration for writing the book? What is the book about? Who does it serve so that people who are interested in learning more about what you're doing and your teaching can pick up a copy. And it's going to be released soon. It might be released when this, this podcast is actually released, but you can visit my site at authormonicaallen.com and it's going to be available on Amazon. You've already said the book is called Girls Just Want to Have Funds and the dollar sign for the S on the end. The inspiration was that if one Wednesday night, I couldn't afford the pizza. And I decided that's it. Enough is enough. I'm going to not dip into my measly savings account to get a pizza. So we cooked frozen pizza for our family that night. I started reading everything I could get my hands on. And the bottom line was there was a lot of good things and people should pick a program and stick with it. But what I found was 
many people got overwhelmed when there were 10 or 13 steps because they were looking ahead. Step eight might be fund, fund my kid's 529 college plan and I couldn't afford a pizza last night. So what I've done is I'm jump starting with four steps that anybody, and I say girls just want to have funds because I have this heart for mothers that are running the households by themselves, which it's, it's a large amount, especially after COVID and with our divorce rate being so high. But young men, older men, anybody that wants to get their finances in control can use these four steps to really get their finances of the household in control. So then they can decide what they're going to do. The noose will around the neck will loosen and they can go and have a better life. Much of what I talk about in the book though, is not just money. It's on our thoughts about money and also how mom's attitude, whether she's controlling the finances in the house or not, plays a big portion on the whole attitude of the family. For example, if mom says this year, we're going to Disney or mom decides that we're just going to take a camping trip close by or a water park close by and save money that year. Her attitude about that will affect the kids and the whole family and the peace or the non-peace of the family. So the female usually, that old saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Well, the female controls the pulse of the household. And so hopefully by having a good attitude about it, The whole family benefits and learns along the way. And it's a great example to teach your kids that you you might have or teach yourself delayed gratification and the fact that we're educating that maybe on the soccer ball, we fix it instead of just throwing it in the trash because a flap broke off of it. And we're learning really to be a good steward of everything we have, not just our money, but the money is such an important part of life because you need it like you need oxygen. And what a foundation to establish for the kids, right? Right. That just all of these things will will direct how the kids grow up and see finance and see money. And it's what you're doing is just kind of a chain reaction and you're kicking off that first domino for a lot of people that will lead to great things. For everything that you're doing, I'm so grateful because you're putting a lot of just great things into the world. Tell us how people can follow up to connect with you so if they say, I need more Monica in my life, I need, I need to know what the other three steps are. I, I need to get on this. I need to get with this program. How do people find you? How do they connect? They find me by my website, authormonicaallen.com. They can find me on Facebook under the same name, Author Monica Allen, and on Instagram. Monica, it's been great yeah. chatting with you. You are great. an amazing resource for so many. And thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much for having me. Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.